let's reminisce about last night Halloween with the problem of the day. After trick or treat, yes, I know a lot of you go out trick or treating. It's fun, is it not? It is great fun. Jasmine discovered she had 36 candy bars, which made up 45% of her candy treats. Whew, how many treats does she collect in all? She did pretty good. That's a pretty good stash for Halloween night. Again, trick-or-treating, she discovered she had 36 candy bars, making up 45% of her candy treats. We're going to find out how many treats she had in all. Let's see where we're going to go with this. Let's take a look at it. And key word is, well, there's a lot of words in this thing, aren't there? So let's kind of decipher it. It's a story, and, and it's a story we all do. Now, you have, or Jasmine does here, excuse me, has 36 candy bars. Ha ha! That's what she ended up with. You know, I'm talking about, it's a percent problem, by the way. Here we have 40 45%, ooh, 45% of her candy treats. How many treats did she, so we want to know where did she start? How many treats did she have when she was figuring out what her percentage and, oh goodness, the 36 bars, all those things, counting things up. So where did she start? What was her base? So let's look at this problem from the standpoint, as I like to, it's a part over base equaling, aha, uh -huh, percent over 100. It's a good old straightforward percentage problem, but got a little twist, trick-or-treat twist to it. That's like that TTT. Whew. Trick or treat twists. Don't say it too many times. Things could come out wrong. Now, put in what you know. Put in the elements that you know here. Well, what do we know? Do we know the part? In other words, do we know where we ended up? Do we know the ending of the story? Yes, we do. She came out with 36 candy bars. So we're going to put the 36 right there. Underneath that, do we know what she... That's the whole idea, isn't it? How many treats has she collected? Oh, we do not know what her total was or her base. So we'll put an N down there for like anything better. It stands for a number. Now, kick along here. What is our percent? It is, aha, 45. And you know what the game plan is? Percent always goes over 100. So you can't mess that one up very much, all right? The percent is 45. We put it over 100. We are set and fired up and ready to, yes, cross multiply. Are you ready to cross multiply out there, everybody? Our staff is ready to cross multiply. I am too. So let's go ahead and do that. And I want to caution, I always do that, doesn't, don't I? Don't try to cancel with the 36, I mean, 4 will go into both 36 and 100, but that's not going to fly here. If you want to do any canceling, you could do 45 over 100, all right? But since we're already in good shape, and we've got a nice trusty calculator waiting to do the arithmetic for us, this will work out fine. But honestly, you could have knocked that down. Well, you could have divided 5 into both of them. You'd have 9 over 20. Yeah, that might make it look a little bit easier there to figure out, but let's just get back to business here. Let's see where we're going to go. I am going to cross multiply, as I said. So here we go. We have 45 times n. We'll just write that as 45n because that's what that means, by the way. You know, sometimes I have people tell me, ask me, what, do you, what is that 45n or something times n or what? You know, I said, what's multiplication? You know, that's what it actually looks like. They'll just say, well, what is that 40n or 30n or whatever? Now, let's cross multiply. Keep this working here. We've got 3600. Now, there's no fractions left. There's no confusion, right? By the way, another little point I'm going to make here, because I know some of you are watching this online, and sometimes we have a tendency to make mistakes. Don't make this 45n over 3600 yet, okay? I mean, it's not a fraction. We're trying to just say something is equal. In other words, you're losing the fractions when you do this cross multiplication game. Just a little tidbit there. Now, what does that do? Now we're going to divide by 45 both sides. And we're going to take that 45 and divide it into 3600. Let's do the calculator for that because this is kind of like a big number. 3600. And we're going to divide by 45. And that's why we do calculus for those big long division problems. Yes, we get 80 out of that. So it's not so bad. It's not so bad at all. Actually, it's pretty good. So our n value is 80. What does n stand for? That's how many treats she collected. Now, let's go back. Let me drop the lower third out just a second here. Let's see where we're going to go with all that good stuff. In other words, we want to check, see how it works. In other words, does 36 out of 80 give us the question mark? What does it give us? So let's do a quick check here. We'll clear out. I uh, will clear out here. Let's see on the calculator. Let's see where we go. Thank you. Let's pick up 36. 
and we're going to divide by 80. I hope we're going to get 45 because that's the game plan here. That would be 45%. Now, by the way, it will be a decimal because we're dividing, right? We're doing 36 divided by 80. So, and then we'll just move the decimal two places to change to percent, correct? Everybody got that? Yeah, it says uh, 45 hundredths or 0.45 as we so affectionately love to call that in our world of math. And move that decimal two places and that does give us 45%. Going back to our original problem, and that, my friends, checks out. So there's a quick way to get check back through your answer. Once you have established the proportion, cross-multiplying is so much easier because so many times we just think we're going to multiply these two numbers, but you notice what happened here? We had to multiply 36 and 100, which was easy, 3,600, but dividing by the 45 definitely gave us something different than we would have had if we'd multiplied 36 times 45 or changed that to decimal 0.45. So you've got to be careful. Set it up in proportion. If you do the right the proportion, if the proportion comes out correctly, you can't miss it, okay? You'll be either multiplying or dividing, and it will guide you which way you go. So there you have it, problem of the day.